Jay Gabler, Duluth News Tribune arts and entertainment reporter with another special edition of the DNT Minute featuring my column, Front Row Seat. This week I write about new beach reads, well, new books, you can take them to the beach or wherever, from the Northland. There are so many books with Northland connections released each year, it's hard for even the most voracious reader to keep up. Here's a very partial roundup of some recent titles by local authors or spotlighting Duluth and nearby areas. First up, The Donut Lady and the World's Best Pet Chicken. The Grand Marais landmark World's Best Donuts is getting literary, which is appropriate for a business located just down the street from Drury Lane Books. The Donut Lady and the World's Best Pet Chicken is a 34-page picture book written by late Marietta Altrichter, who founded the shop in 1969 with illustrations by her daughter, Donna Wilson. It tells the true story of an ailing chicken once brought to Altrichter by Dee Brazel, her granddaughter, who is today the shop owner. Emmy, the world's best pet chicken, according to the book, recovered and ingratiated herself into the family. On Instagram, the shop wrote that bringing the book together was a multi-generational family affair. Four generations all pitched in to help manage, edit, proofread, and contribute photographs and illustrations. The fifth generation drew the donuts around each of the page numbers. Copies are available at World's Best Donuts. Also, congratulations to Grand Marais resident Stacey Lola Driard, whose seven aunts, or aunts you might say, I say aunts. Anyway, the book recently won a Minnesota Book Award in the memoir and creative nonfiction category. Next up, The Girl in Duluth. St. Paul author Sigurd Brown's novel was published last year and is now a finalist in the mystery thriller category of the Midwest Book Awards. The author describes it as a literary mystery in the vein of Alice Siebold's The Lovely Bones and Paula Hawkins' The Girl on the Train. The story is set in Minnesota near the Canadian border. 18-year-old June is drawn into a world of terror when her mother disappears amid a rash of local murders. June's investigations take her to a series of addresses in Duluth, where she hardly has time for a wild rice burger between painful revelations about people she thought she knew well. Not well enough. Next, a picture book about two woodland friends. Duluth author-illustrator Chris Monroe is best known as the creator of the series Monkey with a Tool Belt, which inspired the Netflix series Chico Bonbon. Her latest, Sasquatch and Squirrel, is about an unlikely friendship between a Bigfoot who's trying to have fun while laying low and a squirrel whose attitude towards humans is a little more forthright. In a very Minnesotan touch, they end up bonding over sea dart. Then we have North Shore Shipwreck Stories. The Edmund Fitzgerald, which sank near Whitefish Bay, as the song says, is Lake Superior's best-remembered shipwreck. Michael Schumacher has written plenty about the Mighty Fitz, as one of his book titles refers to it, and now he's turning his gaze west to the North Shore and Isle Royal in a book set for July publication. Too Much Sea for Their Decks includes such fateful wrecks as the Thomas Wilson, a whaleback lost in what amounted to a traffic accident outside Duluth Harbor in 1902, the Benjamin Noble, lost in 1912 near Two Harbors and not discovered until 2004, and the casualties of Lake Superior's Toughest Storm, a 1905 whopper that inspired the construction of Split Rock Lighthouse. Readers curious about the tales of sailors on Lake Superior and elsewhere may also want to check out Bold Sea Stories 2, the sequel to an earlier volume by former Duluthian Marlon Bree, now a resident of Shoreview, Minnesota. Next up, Reflections on a Life in Music. Raised in Virginia and currently a resident of Duluth, Paul Metza has made his life in the Minnesota music scene and crossed paths with everyone from Bob Dylan to David Carr, who wrote the foreword to Metza's 2011 memoir, Blue Guitar Highway. Metza's new book, Alphabet Jazz, includes a wide range of verse and prose, including a tribute to the late Larry Keegan, a mutual friend with Bob Dylan, the lyrics to Metza's song, St. Louis County Fair, and Metz's story of stealing a bar stool from the Stone Pony in Asbury Park, New Jersey. There's more to come from Metza, who's co-author of a forthcoming book about the band that backed Dylan in his Minneapolis sessions for Blood on the Tracks. Next, stories from Duluth's past. News Tribune readers will recognize the name of David Aus. He writes the Bygones feature, plumbing the archives to recount the Northland's colorful history. His new book is aptly titled Duluth Stories, 
people and events from the Zenith City's past. The 20 stories include the saga of Duluth's Lady Godiva. Pearl Blagan portrayed the nude rider at the Minnesota State Fair in the 1940s. Babe Ruth's visit to Duluth. After some public appearances, he went duck hunting in the area with two Detroit Tigers. And an 1892 hoax involving a supposed Walt Whitman poem about Duluth. It went in part, The murmur of waves bearing heavy freighted argosies. Oh, and that's not to mention the human flies. Then we have some life lessons from the North Woods. Daryl J. Peterson doesn't make you wait to find out what happened in the incident that inspired the title of his new book, Campfire in the Basement. Peterson makes clear that, at eight, he was careful to select a spot on the concrete floor that was at least three feet from any of the flammable objects which filled our basement. Suffice to say, he lived to tell that tale and the many more that fill his memoir about growing up on Iyer Lake in Elborn Township. The book is full of warm nostalgia and the spirit of a Christmas story, without the leg lamp, but with pickled herring and a fish house. Then we have an investigation of institutionalization. Duluth author Michelle Matthews took several years to research Complicated Warding, which was written in response to records from the Fergus Falls State Hospital, the St. Cloud Reformatory for Men, and various county poor farms scattered across the state, she wrote in a letter accompanying a review copy. Complicated warding is meant to spur conversations about how we care for the most vulnerable among us. With images, verse, and historical documents, Matthews exposes the grain of lives lived in institutions that can bring both hope and despair. The slim volume closes with two personal poems dedicated to the author's father and daughter, respectively. Last up, a Minnesota bucket list. There's a bucket on the cover of 100 Things to Do in Minnesota Before You Die. Lest you miss the point that author Julie Jo Larson is filling your bucket list. Among her Northland must-dos are enjoying a bite at Gator's Grilled Cheese Emporium in Ely, walking the Superior Hiking Trail, and visiting the Sudan Underground Mine. Duluthians may find it a little odd that Larson singles out the Wisconsin-based Duluth Trading Company as one of Minnesota's retail musts when many local Duluth retailers go unmentioned. That said, Larson does aptly identify the Clayton Jackson McGee Memorial as a Duluth spot where every Minnesota visitor should stop to reflect. That's this week's column. For more information on those books, including links to where you can find copies, check out DuluthNewsTribune.com. I'll be back next week with a column all about the upcoming opera by Lyric Opera of the North. It will be presented in Duluth next weekend. So listen in for that. Until then, I'm Jay Gabler, Duluth News Tribune.